In this lecture, we are going to be talking about namespacing in PHP. The most basic definition that I can give for a namespace is that it is a pointer to a file path where we can actually find a specific class or a function. And the problem that a namespace seeks to solve is name collusion. And I'm going to give you a very simple example of name collusion in PHP or any programming language. Let's say in our program, we have a class that is called student. And then we are making use of another library that contains a class called student. So once we bring this library into our project, we are going to encounter name collusion because the program is no longer able to differentiate between our student class and the student class that was imported from the library that we're using. So this is one of the main problem that namespace seeks to solve. In the sense that it now let me to create my own classes inside of a container. So it's sort of like a folder that defines where to find my classes. This will prevent the issue of name collusion when I import other classes into my project. Let's now get into the test editor and see how we can actually implement namespace in our project. And then we are also going to be talking about a better way to actually auto load classes when building projects in PHP. Right here inside of our test editor, I'm going to create a new class inside of the SROC folder. As you can see right now, it is currently empty. I'm going to call this class student. And at the very top, I'm going to use the namespace keyword and then say, I want to name this up. So this is a simple way to actually create a namespace in PHP. So what we are doing here is saying that this student class belongs to this namespace app. If I have another student class outside of the SROC folder, it is going to be different from this specific student class. There will be no name conflict at all, especially if it belongs to another namespace. Here we are just going to create a constructor class public function underscore underscore construct. And then we just do a vadom from inside app namespace and then let's come to index.php we are going to create a new instance of the student class so we're just going to say new student and then let's now do a reload on the browser you can see that we actually got an error include sroc app slash student.php fail to open stream no such file or directory now, the problem that we have here is because of the auto loading function that we are using right here. This function is looking for a specific class name inside of this folder. But right now, the circumstances have changed. We are inside of a namespace. And when we are inside of a namespace, you can see the way that the class name is being returned. It's going to be app slash student, which is what we have here. The way that we can actually walk around this is to come inside of this function. And then right here, we are going to say class underscore name underscore array. And then we are going to explode the class name. Explode class name. The delimiter that we want to use will be the slash. So we're going to use backslash backslash. So one of them is actually an escape character, comma, and then we put the class name. So what we are doing here is actually getting the class name. Let's just do a vadom. Say vadom, and then let's just exit. Let's do a reload on the browser. So right now you can see that we have an array app student. If we do a vadom on class name, so this goes back to the definition that I was telling you about that a namespace actually is a pointer to the path where we can actually find that specific class. So it gives us the fully qualified name to that specific class that we are looking for. And then I'm just going to delete the vadump statement. And right here on line four, instead of saying SRC dot class name, we are going to now get the last element of this array, class name array. So we can use the PHP imbuilt function called end and then give it the array. So it's going to give us the last element that is inside of this array. So right now, if we do a reload, should be able to get from inside app namespace. The preferred way for us to actually reference this class is to 
make use of the use statement. So at the very top here of my script, I'm going to add a use statement and I'm going to say use app student. And then here I can refer to the student class directly without having to include the fully qualified name. You can see that we still get the exact same thing. So this is a simple way to solve this problem, but it actually presents to us another problem. One, this is not a suitable auto-loading mechanism for a big project. This cannot actually handle a big project because it just assumes that I'm always going to have all my classes inside of SROC folder. What if we are building an MVC application where we now have some other folders where we want to load things from. This would now be very, very inefficient and at worst, we can try to hack it and then look for different ways to make it work, but it's going to be very difficult to make it work. It is not a convenient way to auto load classes when our project is getting big and especially when we begin to use different namespaces. So a better way would be for us to actually use Composer which is a PHP dependency manager. If you have not used Composer before, we have a series here on Dev Screencast that covers all you need to know about using Composer with PHP. So go check it out and get up to speed with using Composer in PHP. So what I'm going to do now is just show us a basic way that we can actually auto load classes from the namespace using Composer instead of the PHP auto load register function. I'm going to open the project folder before you follow the steps that I'm doing now, you actually need to have Composer installed. So if you have not done that, go ahead and watch the series on Composer on Dev Screencast here, and then you can follow on with this video. So I'm going to type Composer in it so that I can generate a file which is called Composer.json. So I'm going to leave the default name, Tedia OOP, as the package name, put a description, OOP Bootcamp, and then auto name, I'm going to specify my name, or I could just use dev screencast ink, and then put my support email. Minimal stability, we can just skip this. And then we're going to say this is actually a project license. Let's say MIT. Do you want to define any dependencies? No, we only want to use auto load. Are you okay with this structure? Yes. And right now, if we Go back again to the test editor. All right here, you can already see that I have composer.json. You can see the composer.json file. So what we want to do here is to add another key to this JSON object called autoload. Ensure that you're using double quotes, otherwise you're going to get an error. And then inside of here, I'm going to specify the type of autoloading that I'm going to use. I'm going to be using PSRO4 specification. So if you don't know what PSR4 is, I'm going to provide a link here. Basically, it is just a standard that defines how classes should be auto-loaded. So you can actually read about the specification from this link to learn more about this standard that defines how you should name your classes, how they should be auto-loaded from a specific directory or any place within your project. So this is what we are going to be using, PSR4. There's PSR0 and there are other PSR. You can actually check them all out from this link. So right here, I'm going to say PSR-4 and then pass it an object. And then here we are now going to specify what is the name of the namespace that we want Composer to auto load. So we're going to have one namespace here called app escape. And then we are going to specify where is the folder that Composer should look for this namespace. So in our case, Composer should look for this namespace inside of the SROC folder. That's all we need to do here. Let's get back again to the command line. Now we are going to say composer dump autoload. This is going to generate an autoload file for us and it's going to place it inside of a directory called vendor. Let's run that. It says generating autoload files. It has now placed it inside of a new folder called vendor. And here we have autoload.php. So this is how Composer is actually going to load 
our classes from the namespace that we have specified. There are a lot of things that we can actually do with Composer Auto Loading. I've actually covered this extensively on this screencast. You can actually check it out. Now, the only thing that we need to do is come inside of Index. We are just going to require that file. So we're going to say require underscore underscore dir slash vendor slash autoload.php. So we require the autoload file. So you see, we get the exact same thing. But what we have done now is make it very flexible in such a way that if we now have other namespaces, Composer will be able to pick them up as long as they are inside of the SROC folder. And again, if we want to load from other folders, all we need to do is to actually update our auto load key inside of Composer and then Composer will actually be able to load from those folders. We don't have to do any kind of computation. The last thing that I want to bring to your attention here when you are working with namespace is the fact that if we are using classes that are not defined inside of our project or within the same namespace, we need to actually include the use statement inside of the class. Let's consider a quick example. So right here, we are inside of student. If we create another class here that shares the same namespace with student, then we don't really need to include the use statement. We can actually use the class directly. So let's create a new class called record. And it's going to be in the same namespace app. Inside of the student class, I can now refer to that class record without including the use statement. Let's now create another class here, which is from a different namespace. So we are going to call this test and then the namespace will be Acme. So now we have class test, which has another namespace Acme. Let's come inside of student. And then we are going to use test here, test Acme. And you can see that my test editor is smart enough to actually import the namespace because we are now using a different namespace. If we comment at the use statement on line four, then we are going to have a problem locating this class. We cannot locate it. As long as the class is not under the same namespace with the current namespace, you actually need to include the use statement or you use the fully qualified name. In this case, we could say slash Acme slash test. And then we can actually get rid of line four and we'll still be okay. But a much cleaner way would be to actually include the use statement. Finally, if we are going to be using a PHP class, for example, let's say the exception class or the PDO class that we used previously, we need to always preface it with the backslash. Let's illustrate that quickly. So we are going to say DB is equal to new PDO. You can see we need to always include the backslash because this is not inside of any of the namespace that is in our project. So we are saying look for this outside of this namespace. So it's actually going to be able to look for the PDO class. So let's say MySQL, then OS is equal to local OS, and then DB name should be equal to store, and then the username should be store, and then the password will be secret. Going to just grab this and wrap it inside of a try cache block, and then come here and say catch PDO exception. Okay, so you take note of what I am trying to illustrate here is when we are referring to a class that we have not created but we know exists inside of a standard PHP library or other libraries that we have imported, we can preface it with the backslash. In that case, it will be able to actually reference this specific class, knowing that it is not within our namespace and we have not created it. Right here, I'm going to do a vadump on ES get message. And then we're deliberately going to cause a problem here. And then let's do a reload on the browser. App student constant must be instance of record. Okay, so this is happening because we did not pass in the required value to the instance of the student object. So inside index.php, here we should create a new record. Say so new record and then new test. And you can come here and say use record, then also use test. And let's do a reload again. 
says class test not found in D. So the reason why we are getting this error is because inside of composer.json, we specify that we only want to auto load from the namespace app. So we can actually remove this and just make it blank. And then we are going to generate the auto load file and then pass it the dash O option to optimize it. Now let's do a reload we can actually get it. And here you can see we get the exception message could not find driver. And then lastly, another way to do what we just did inside of student, where we make reference to PDO and exception is to add the use statement at the top. So say use exception. And then we can also say use PDO. And then we can get rid of the backslash and then get rid of the backslash here. This should actually be PDU exception. And then we can remove the namespace from test class and just reference the use statement at the top. Let's now do a reload on the browser. Everything still works as intended. All right, that's it for namespace. I'll see you in the next lecture.